Hello. One of the machines I collected on a recent journey was a Sony SLC9 Betamax video recorder, which was given to me by the previous owner just because he wanted a good home for it. This is a highly regarded model. I use two of them already with my PCM digital audio recorders, uh, as it's one of the very few video recorders where you can switch the dropout compensator off to allow the PCM audio decoder's own error correction to work properly. I've done some videos about that. But they were not the most reliable of machines. So uh, here is uh, something to play with, which I collected from my trip the other day, and it's a Sony C9. And the fault, as reported, is that the display doesn't work, which usually means failure of the DC to DC converter. But let's see if the rest of the machine works, and um, if it is only a problem with the DC to DC converter, and uh, then perhaps I can see about fixing that later. The front looks okay. Very often this all goes out of alignment. So that looks promising. Power cable is extremely dirty. And I'll plug this into an isolated supply. Then we'll pop a tape in and see if it does anything. I don't have it connected to a monitor just yet, but let's start with the isolated supply. See if it powers up. There's a power switch on the back as well, I think, on this one. Right, so, switch it on. Don't worry about the sound, that's the fans on my supply, which I'll switch off when I remember where the switch is. Another day. Right then, let's switch on the main supply. Have I missed a switch somewhere? Oh! Not at all what I was expecting. The display works fine. A little bit dim on that, but that's fine. No tape in there. Okay. Oh, wow. We'll pop a tape in there, shall we? Okay, let's um, get this monitor to be AV input. Switch this all on again. There's something funny going on. The display is no longer working. How peculiar. Press play. Nothing on the screen. Okay, you definitely have a fault of some sort. Let's try a jet. Well, the jet mechanism works beautifully. No picture. Let's have a play with tracking. Nothing at all. Okay, I have a machine to fix. And there we go, fixed it. Uh, no, not really. I did have a picture due to a cabling problem, I'll throw that cable away in a minute, but right now I've got it patched out. And the display is working intermittently, so I still blame the DC to DC converter. I don't know if you can see the display there, but it's, uh, it's not very bright, but you can see the display is working there. So intermittently, it will not work, so if I switch it off and on again a few times, it will either work or not. Let's see if we can demonstrate that. So we've got it switched on now and the display is working. And it reverts to clock when I switch it off at the front panel. That's completely normal. 
Now we switch off the power switch at the back, off it goes. And now we'll um, switch it on again at the back. <laughs> it works. Off and try it on again. How peculiar. A little tap around here because I think the DC to DC converters can suffer from dry joints. No, that's just plain intermittent, isn't it? Whip the lid off. I see it's got some correct and some incorrect screws here, so clearly it's been tended to before. And this is another clue that it's been tended to before. The bar here has two gears at the end. Originally when built, these gears were being nylon but they've been replaced with upgraded um, metal gears there on the end of a bar like this. This is one from another machine I just happen to have lying around. Uh, too small a part really to manufacture successfully on a 3D printer with the correct strength and, and uh, alignment so it's a nuisance you can't get these gears anymore and if you have one that still has nylon gears you're in trouble there. Now the DC to DC converter, I believe, is here on this power supply. This is this is a Mark II type DC to DC converter. It's shiny metal with holes drilled in it. The Mark I, I believe, was all matte, all matte with no holes. These Mark II ones are easier to repair. So, if that does have dry joints or similar problems, we should be able to get that apart and fix it. I don't know how to get this out, so that's going to be my first challenge. I think probably release the whole power supply and then take this board off. We'll have a look at that. You can tell I've never taken one of these power supplies out before. I don't know what screws to undo. Okay, we have access to this board. That wasn't done very eloquent, eloquently, but <clears throat> you know, I didn't know this. I didn't. I'd never taken one of these apart before. So that I believe is a DC to DC converter. Let's have a, have a look in there. Yes, this is it. And the connectors are labelled in ground 38 volts, I think that is. So you can get there. Thirty-eight volts minus twenty-six volts. I think that's the one that goes. AC 3.8 volts, that's for the filament heaters for the display. OK, you can see this has been removed before. Let's take it out and then um, have a look at the circuitry. Maybe change some capacitors if they're looking a bit sick. Right. OK, I have my desolder pump. It's broke recently. I had to fit a new um, element into it. Right, 
managed to free up the uh, DC DC converter. I think I'll clean this board a bit with some alcohol before I carry on. Now the problem here is that this is soldered together onto this base and it's extremely hard apparently to remove all this solder to get it apart. But that's what I must do. Okay, by use of the hot air gun, I've managed to uh, successfully extract the DC to DC converter module. I can uh, now examine this. So this is the DC DC converter. It's a horrible piece of work if you look at it. It's got you know sticky tape and components up up in in the air here. No component identifications on the bottom side. In fact, I'm not sure there's any on the top side. It's a nasty bit of work. I can't easily see which of the pads for this capacitor here that I don't like the look of. That one I need to test again. This one here says 10 microfarads and I've just tested it came out at 6. So I'm fairly sure these capacitors are all suspect. But I'll remove them one at a time I think. Okay, so starting with this one, it's supposed to be 10 microfarad 50 volt. And that's complete rubbish. It says in circuit ESR greater than 20 ohms. So we're on to something here, we really are, we'll change these capacitors. Okay, to replace those uh, 10 microfarad 50 volt capacitors, I've got some 10 microfarad 63 volt 105 degrees Celsius capacitors. So that's the first two to be changed. Let's look at the value of that one. It's supposed to be 330 microfarads and it's coming out 330 microfarads. To my surprise, that one's okay. With 1.4 ohms of ESR. There's an argument for placing it anyway, but given that it's I don't know. I'm tempted to leave that one. We'll see. We'll come back to that one, I think. And we've got this uh, 10 microfarad 16 volt component down here.
that comes in at 6 microfarad and off scale ESR, so we'll replace that one too. Okay, here it is ready to be reassembled. I did change the uh, other capacitor. The diagram says it's 47 microfarad, 16 volt, but actually what's in there is 330 microfarad, very different value. But then the diagram also doesn't show these extra components, so clearly there's been some component changes along the way. But I'm happy that that's uh, in good working order now. You could argue that I could go through all the small value capacitors, but uh, I don't think they're likely to be an issue. I think I'm happy to test it as is now. I'm going to reassemble that. Okay, I've refitted the DC DC converter. I didn't put quite so much solder on when I refitted the base to that because really it's complete overkill. That's all soldered in properly so I can uh, reattach it to the power supply, plug in all these connectors and uh, give it a whirl. Okay, having uh, reassembled the power supply and I actually went through the uh, rest of the power supply beyond the DC-DC converter checking for bag capacitors there, they all appear to be okay. So uh, let's switch it on and see if we have a clock. Well, we do. We also have no magic smoke, which is a good thing. And I'll confirm that we still have uh, picture and sound. Uh, press the right button on this whole thing. We do. Still picture. Not bad. You can adjust that as well. Okay, good. So we'll test this again later. If I'm not mistaken, that display is a little bit brighter than it was before too. Be aware that there's a display brightness switch inside this cover. This machine now works very well. I'm very pleased with that. I found that the previous owner had left the uh, PCM switch enabled, which is uh, going to result in a poor picture because it's only for use with the PCM digital audio system. Uh, see my other YouTube videos on that subject. Well, I hope you've enjoyed seeing this lovely machine brought back to full working order. Please do like, share and especially subscribe so I'll do more content on audio and video technology in the future. Bye for now.